All right, hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be lecturing on section 1.11 uh, for this pre-calculus course. This is the section on solving equations and inequations or inequalities graphically. Uh, I have a, a sense of inner uh, uh, conf conflict about this section because as you've learned in previous sections, graphing a function takes quite a bit of effort. And uh, right, the more accurate a graph you want, the more effort it takes. So a lot of this section, is, it just involves sweeping all that work under the rug and saying, here's how you can solve things if you already have the graph, okay? So if you want to learn how to graph a function, go back to a couple lectures ago and watch that section. I'm going to assume you know how to do that, and I'm going to assume you know what a graph is here. Uh, just the set of all points which satisfy a given relationship, a given function, a given rule, a given equation. Uh, I'm going to assume you know all that and we're just going to uh, see what we can figure out from graphs. Things like intercepts, y and x intercepts, or roots or zeros, or uh, uh, where, one e where one equation is bigger than another, um, and inequalities, things like this. Um, where an equation is positive or negative. So uh, here we go. As I said, I was a little, I'm a little bit conflicted about this, but we're gonna, we're just gonna have to go with it. So here we are. 1.11, solving equations graphically. Maybe. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, solving equations and inequality, inequalities graphically. So, uh, prior to this, we solved things algebraically, right? We we had equations like this, and we could perform a set of steps to solve for x, right? What I'm going to suggest now is that we can quickly translate equations like this or inequalities like this into graphs. Let's take this left side and we're going to call that a graph. Its own little its own little function. It's a graph, right? Of of some there's a relationship here and there is a graph for this. I'm going to take the right side and say, well that's that's another one. All right? So maybe this is y1 and this is y2, different functions here, different equations. What this statement is asking you to do is to find the x which makes both these equations true. So find the x where y1 equals y2. So what I'm going to tell you now is you, you can graph the left side of an equation and you can graph the right side of an equation and you'll see graphically the result. So here we go, I'm going to graph both of these things. And your solution is going to depend entirely on how well you can graph these things. So the first one, y1, is 3x minus 4, looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, slope of 3, so up and over 3 something like this. This is y equals 3x minus 4. The line y equals 1 is at a height of 1. Just constantly y equals 1. Where are these two lines equal? That's right here at the intersection point. Okay. Now it looks to me I don't know if I can zoom in here. Can I zoom in? I can. It looks to me right there. If this is 1, then I don't know, somewhere in between 1 and 2. So we'll say approximately 1. Point, I don't know, 6, 7. Your answer there is going to depend on how accurately you can graph these things or how accurately a computer can graph them for you. But if you're given any equality, 
any equality. So I'll, I'll just flip the book here to the next page. They say, uh, here's a good example, 5 minus 3x is equal to 8x minus 20. Okay, now you could solve this algebraically. You could add things to, to both sides, subtract things, divide things, and solve. Or you can say, here's one equation for a line. Here's another equation. So I'm going to forget this equals sign for a second and say this is 1 and this is 2. And now I'm looking for their intersections. So I will graph y1 and y2, whatever they look like. It looks something like this. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and negative 3x. So 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. Some, first one looks something like this. That's y1. The second one looks something like this. Minus 20 with a slope of 8. So it's way down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right there, and a slope of 8. So it comes way up really fast. Whatever the solution may be, my graph's definitely not accurate enough. If you had a graphing utility to graph these more accurately, this intersection in particular, the x coordinate. is the x value where y1 is equal to y2, which was our original problem, to find those x's which make these two equations equal to each other, right? This is our first equation, this is our second equation, we're looking for the x which makes them equal. So if we put both graphs on a plane, where they cross, they both have the same height for a given x, so they are equal to each other at that point. So in general, no matter what it is, if you have one function, one line, squiggle, graph, equal to another one, so this is graph 2, and I will just randomly draw here. So this one will be in blue. So here's my first one. Here's my second one in pink. Da, 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 da. Like that. These two, this equation has solutions so they are equal at every x, I'm going to list them, x1, x2, x3, x4. This equation is true wherever these two graphs intersect, and specifically at the x coordinates. So if you plug in x1, to this and to this, you will have an equality. Okay? So that is graphically how you can solve any equation. But again, this depends on you being able to graph these things, which is not necessarily the easiest thing. So let me take you through a few possibilities that might sort of stand out as strange. The first one is no solutions. So let me give you this one. x squared um, minus 4x plus 6 equals 0. So this is a, a totally legitimate question, right? Solve it. <laughs> um, x squared minus 4x plus 6. So you try to factor this, and you might, you might try. Uh, that, uh, but it won't work, at least not with real numbers. 
And if you were to graph this, what would you find? You would find something that looks like this. It's a parabola, a quadratic, facing upwards. So that's y1. y2 on the right side is a horizontal line at a height of 0. Where do they cross? Right? For what x values do they cross? They don't. So, so this is a strange one. It sort of stands out because there's there's no place where they cross. So there's literally no solutions to this equation because the graph of the left side and the graph of the right side never cross. That means that there's no solution at all. Okay? I've illustrated before with my previous examples that sometimes there's just one, one solution. Right? I gave the example of a line like this and a line like this where they crossed at just one point. So there's just one x value where they agree. I've also given examples of lots of solutions. So here's one graph of something. I don't know what the equation to that is. Here's a graph of something else. Looks more like a line. And here's one x value which works. Here's another x value that works. Here's another x value that works. Here's another one. And maybe there's more even beyond this, this window of view. But uh, there can be one solution. There can be many solutions. There can be no solutions. Um, sometimes, depending on how you graph, it might look like your, your graphs don't cross. But I want you to be careful of that because you might not be seeing the whole picture. right? If I graphed this thing on the left here, but instead of graphing this much of it, instead I graphed this much, which seems odd, but it does happen. And this is just for an illustration point of view. If this is your window, into what those graphs look like, your graph would look like this, right? You wouldn't see an axis, and you would see this, and you would see this. And I might have switched the colors there. But if this is your window, you have no way of knowing what happens over here. It looks like they might be leading towards each other, but maybe this one curls up. Maybe this one curls down. Who knows, right? You need to be careful of how much of a graph that you graph. You need to graph a sufficient amount because it's entirely possible that you have no solutions or you have lots of solutions. Your graph doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. Okay, the next kind of thing uh, that I want to um, give you solutions for, give you... Uh, some tips on is how to solve an inequality. So this is the second and last half of this lecture. So solving inequalities graphically. So we know how to algebraically, algebraically manipulate these things now, but what if we're working on something like this? 3x minus 4, just to pull our original example. Um, what if you want to find where 3x minus 4 is bigger than 1? Or what if you wanted to find something a little bit a little bit more difficult, like x squared minus 5x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0? Right, so I'll do this as my first example, and I'll do this as my second example. So inequality is really the, the process is going to be exactly the same. You're going to take the left side you're going to graph that as if it was its own function. You're going to take the right side and graph it as if it's its own function. 
we've done this. So 3x minus 4 looks like this. Crosses down here, and it goes up pretty steeply. 1 is this horizontal line at a height of 1. So what we're looking for here is where this, which is the black one, is bigger than this, which is the pink one. So bigger than in the mathematical context here can be associated with above. So in the graphical context, we're talking about where is the black line there above the pink line. So I'll just highlight that over here not down here right definitely not down there it's it's the, the green highlighted part but we're not really talking about the part of the graph right the solution to this inequality is not a piece of the graph the graph helps us see where but it we're not answering, you know, this part of the graph satisfies that. What we're trying to look for is the x's that make this true. So the x's where this graph is bigger than this graph. So we found before, right, this intersection point. And I, I illustrated that there's an x value that makes them equal. So which x values, to answer this question, which x values make the left graph there, 3x minus 4, bigger? Well, that's one of them, because we have the equals possibility here, but also any of these, it looks like. So I would say as my answer, x1, whatever that is, 1 or 2 or 3, all the way out to infinity. These are the x's that make this graph, 3x minus 4, bigger than or equal to this graph, 1. Okay. The next example, question or equation 2 here, asks this question, right? It's solve x squared minus 5x plus 6 less than or equal to 0 graphically. Solve it graphically. Well, <laughs> we need the graph. Uh, to help myself out, I'm going to real quickly factor this. It's x minus 2, x minus 3. Okay, that, that's a nice way to graph a parabola or to help graph one because if you know the factors, then you know the zeros. 2, 3. Here's one, here's the y-axis. So our parabola crosses here and crosses here. It actually dips down like this and then goes back up. So if you graphed this parabola on the left, that would be this. If we graph this, the right side. I'll graph that in pink. That is the x-axis. It's the line which has a height of 0. So this is 0. This is our parabola p. So our question is, where is our parabola p? For which x is, is our parabola p smaller than or equal to our constant height 0 line? I think if we highlight it, right? We're looking here. So what x values make that true? In brown, this one makes them equal, this one makes them equal, and everything in between makes the parabola p smaller than zero. So we factored this earlier so we know the exact solution the exact solution is 
any x in 2 to 3. There you have it. Okay? So if you're given any graphs, no matter what they are, so I'll try and use blue here, and I won't make this too crazy. And then I'll use pink for another one. So call this one Y1, and I'll call the blue one Y2. Where is Y2 less than or equal to Y1? For which X values? Well, I'm going to highlight the parts of the graph that make this inequality true. Here our pink line is above the blue one. Here our pink line is above the blue one. Everywhere else the blue one is above the pink one. So what are the x's that make this inequality true? Where well, the, They are the x's that correspond to these arcs. Right there, those two intervals. So any x here or here. There's two intervals that make this true. So no matter what graphs you're given, what you're looking for with these inequalities or equalities is you're looking for their intersections, where they cross. And then you're looking for Right, those x's which make the inequality or the equation true. With equalities, you're just looking for that one x, probably, or that list of x's, or maybe none. With inequalities, you're usually looking for intervals where the entire section of one graph is above another or below another. And so your answer is going to be a list of x's or is going to be an interval of x's. With that, we are done with section 1.11. I, I fully understand that this section requires a lot of graphical uh, capabilities on your part. Uh, go ahead and use a graphing calculator if you need to during this homework, right? Uh, it, as, as much as you try, you might not be able to graph these things accurately enough for WebAssign to take your solutions. So I fully admit that. Uh, and I know I've told you you can't use a calculator, but this is one of those times where if you're not given a line or a parabola to graph, you're, you're going to be kind of out of luck. It's going to be very difficult for you to graph those things accurately enough. So use a graphing utility. Uh, try your best. And I hope this video helps. Uh, and I, well, I guess I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.